Hello, my name's Andrew. I like to build stuff and uh, rock climb. I thought it'd be cool to try to build my own camming device. This is one of the more complicated pieces of rock climbing equipment. He could have put accessory cord in a hardware nut and called it a nut, but he decided to start with the cam. Let's see how he built it and then we'll test it. The lobe, the stem, and the thumb loop. So this is my CNC machine. You can load computer programs onto it based on CAD models and it cuts the shape out you want and also does this very precisely. It takes a little bit of time and it's pretty noisy, but it definitely gets the job done. Next is the stem. I made it using my 3D printer. So the flexible stem and the rigid trigger bar were both able to be 3D printed. Finally, for the weight bearing thumb loop, I use this stuff called Dyneema. It can hold a lot of force, which is really good because the thumb loop needs to hold the force of my fall. And if you put all these things together, you have a nice camion so unit. Who would be crazy enough to put Dyneema in the stem? Black Diamond, that's who. <laughs> now a lot goes into how to splice Dyneema in an effective way. One thing that could simplify this uh, fun little project of his would be to maybe just use a pre-sewn sling that you know it would be rated for 22-ish kilonewtons. This is an unknown variable in a package of unknown variables. Like, it's not even safe, but I made it myself. So I test this cam. Um, I climbed up a route that I knew had the right size crack, and I placed my cam um, with a backup right below it, and then I was able to take my first small fall on it. It like moved a little bit, but it's still fine. Yeah, but it's still fine. Does he not have any other pieces other than one backup? He has one cam as a backup to this. Holding a small one is cool, but I think everyone wants to see some bigger falls now. No way, that actually held. Let's try one bigger one. The damage is actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The Dyneema loop definitely got longer the more I fell on it. So this is definitely slipping and I shouldn't continue to use this. So because I wasn't able to break this myself by falling on it, I'm gonna send it over to Ryan at How Not To to see if he can actually do some heavier pulling on it. I think what's gonna happen is the Dyneema is gonna break because like napkin math wise, the strength of the axle is super strong and I'd be kind of surprised if he actually pulled through the aluminum on these. So this is definitely more expensive than this. I think I paid about 120 bucks in materials for this one. Yeah, but I would not want to make these more than one. <laughs> Let's get to work. So before I pull on this, you can see that is coming out like he said. Uh, and if you look straight down on this, it kind of looks like the axle was kind of bent already. Maybe the axle isn't bent. It just, it just kind of looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Let's, uh, let's see if that holds. Made in America. That's pretty good. What happened? That's in a lot more pieces now. Where did the rest of it go? Oh, I forgot to put the catcher on. That, I, I had a theory that wasn't gonna come undone, but there we go. We took the pants off of this thing. That's the 3D printed plastic. Nice. There's your sling. That is pretty much what's going on in C4 ultralights. Is this what they mean by metal on metal is bad? So I don't know how to put Humpty Dumpty back together. So that's the sling. This is the only missing part. Did it just shear off the axle? Didn't he say the math on this was, this was the strong point? Napkin math. Oh no, the napkin math was wrong. This is why you scratch it out on paper instead. You've broken the axle. Wow, broken the <laughs> axle. Here's an OG Camelot number three right here. And you can just see what happens to the axle. Even these, these double axles on a cam like this, when you pull, from the center of it, and it holds really well, this is what ends up happening. This is the ultralight from Black Diamond, and it also has the same thing going on with the axles here. This is a BD knockoff, and you can also see what happens to the axle on this one. If you wanna see Andrew makes things on our shelves, <laughs> too bad, but I really like the fact that uh, he wanted to be creative, and then he did some human testing with a backup sort of, and I really appreciate the stoke. 
Stoke goes a long ways. That's what makes climbing fun. Also the falling, if it catches you. We do sell legitimate certified ultralights in the store and you should really sign up for the emails because we have a lot of good stuff in that every Saturday at hownotto.com slash sign up. Thanks for watching. Cheers.